Today we're going to be reading the Dragon Prince graphic novel Through the Moon, which is set between seasons 3 and 4 of the show. I got a whole bunch of questions, like, what happens in the aftermath of that giant battle? Where is Claudia? What is she up to? Will Erevos remove from his disgusting cocoon? And then there are much more important questions, like, can elves and humans have kids? What will befall the kingdom of Nudludlia? And where will Viren get his butterfly crack now? I don't know, let's find out. <laughs> So Rayla sees her parents in ice, I'm guessing it's a dream. You like my collection, Rayla? Look here, I've added another. Get away from him. It's too late, Rayla. <laughs> but don't worry, you'll be joining them very soon. So yeah, it was a dream. That's Rayla? I thought that was Mr. Tomlinson from Narnia. Lou Jane says we need to bring the ghost feather to the moon nexus before the next new moon, so she can perform a ritual. Are we gonna see the rebirth of Fifi? Hey, Ez, can you go with us? Don't you have all sorts of kingly duties now? Oh yeah, I guess Ezrin is back on the throne, right? We never found his body, Callum. Yeah, he's still out there. Viren is dead, Rayla. There's no possible way he could have. Nope. Nope. He is very much alive, thanks to Claudia and her necromancy. How am I supposed to move on? I lost my parents, I lost Runan, and I still don't know what happened to them. They're coins. They're all coins. Not this spider again. <laughs> I thought we had put that behind us. So they travel back to Lujane's place real quick. It's like a page. And the guy is there. The guy with the big sword that got chopped in half by a Sunforge blade. And then ran off crying. Right, he did run off crying. So Lu Jane is dating the crying guy, the ship that no one asked for. Hmm, things are changing, aren't they, between humans and elves. What is Soren doing? Is he buttering them up? Yeah, they have changed. This is two human elf couples, I guess. Lu Jane, there was something I wanted to show you. I know the Skyer can him now. Oh, that's right, he can show her his, his skills. Aspero. Ruining everyone's dinner. So they're trying to revive Fifi, I guess. There is a cycle in the world, life and death. It is at the core of all things. The moon embodies the cycle. Bit by bit it will fade away, then bit by bit it will brighten. Kings and commoners, rich and poor, elf and human, each one is equally vulnerable in the beginning and in the end. Let that fact be humbling, let it bind us together. For those you have left behind, think on all they have given you. For those who will come after you, think on all you will give to them. Know that you are always connected. The phoenix is uniquely tethered in both life and death, and yet it is like the rest of us, a part of the cycle. I feel like this is a lot more meaningful than her usual advice, which is just like, humans are terrible, everything is a lie. Don't trust anything. Although I guess in hindsight that's great advice. I mean that was literally what Viren did in the last episode. And Fifi is reborn. So Rayla has been secretly upset this whole comic. But she's not convinced that the threat has been dealt with and she's right. I mean we know she's right. Callum doesn't. So she goes to get some solitude and of course Callum follows her out there. There's no privacy in this relationship at all. My parents aren't going to come back inside some silver egg. I don't want a metaphor. I want to see them again. Rayla continues to be not content with Lu Jane's advice. All she has are fancy words and fake, fake everything. I'm inclined to agree. You wanted me to move on, remember? You wanted me to forget, to give up. You're not the only one who's lost people, Rayla. Well, this is going well. Callum, crying. Yes, I know what happened to them. One of the people you're so worried about killed my stepfather. You know what? You haven't moved on. No one has moved on. I haven't, you haven't, the world hasn't. Keep believing in illusions if it makes you feel better. Ouch. So sympathy for Callum here. I feel like Rayla was on a hair trigger. Like she was just looking to lash out because she's deeply frustrated by something. She's not seeing Callum's intent. His intentions are good. Like he's trying to be there for her as, as her boyfriend. But on Callum's side, I think the mistake there, if there is one, sometimes people aren't looking for you to fix their emotional problems or to comfort them. You know, sometimes people just need to go through these difficult spaces themselves and they just need someone to listen. Although, I mean, he did a pretty good job of that. He wasn't really... Uh, contradicting what she was saying. I know this is just me, this is just me bringing my lens into it, and just like what I think about relationships, but I have felt for a while that Callum is a little bit too overbearing, emotionally. You guys have pointed out something to me important, which is that that's done a lot of good for Rayla, right? Like her instinct is to shrink, and to try to deal with things on her own, and Callum has encouraged her to be more expressive, but I think there's sort of a line, right? Like you gotta give people space too. And, uh, and Callum just found that line. <laughs> <laughs> Rayla left. She didn't even stick around to say hi. I must have really screwed up last night. Why am I so dumb? Why do I always say dumb things? Ah, don't be so hard on yourself. You do say dumb things, but he's good at heart. Maybe I need some advice. I hope he asks Soren. That'd be cool. Don't ask Lu Jane. Do not ask Lu Jane for relationship advice. She's just gonna encourage you to lie. No, why would you ask her? Why? Rayla is in a lot of pain and nothing I say seems to help. For me, in my eyes, the problem is that it's not his job to fix Rayla's problems. His job is to be there for her and for her to know that he accepts her no matter what she's going through. It's not about making her feel better because these are real things that only she can deal with, only she can cope with. She's stuck worrying about her parents about what happened to Runan. See, that seems like a judgment to me. Maybe the truth isn't what she needs. No. Callum, leave. Leave. Here's a little illusionist wisdom. Oh boy. White lies are illusions you build with your words to protect the hearts of those you love. If the truth doesn't work, perhaps you just need to make the right illusions. No. No. I... maybe? No. I'm still not sure that lying is... wait. Wait, maybe there is a spell. You told me about some sort of portal the last time I was here. To a place between life and death. With a full moon and the nexus at the height of its power, yes, the moon nexus could become a portal. But my guess is that Rayla's parents are coins, so... 
they're not dead. You could get lost and trapped there, lose your mind. You'd be pulled to the souls of the dead you share a connection to. I hope you find a way to help Rayla, but the ruins must remain the way they are. Callum ignores Lu Jane's advice, which usually I would agree with, but in this case, he's trying to rebuild the Moon Nexus. I need to know, what happened to them? All the elves? They were all killed. My fat Virin took their bodies and turned them to magic stuff, I guess. All but one of them, he became a coin. I thought I killed my father at the Battle of the Storm Spire. When I saw that I hadn't, that it was only an illusion, I was so relieved. But maybe it would have been better if I really did kill him. Yeah, that was a really interesting moment when Soren attacked Viren. It's a relief to me that Soren is relieved about that. We saw that in the last episode, right? We saw the shock and horror in his, in his face when he attacked Viren. You would imagine that it's gotta be a huge shock for Soren to realize that he's even capable of that. Especially the way he's sort of been blind to these considerations about what's right and what is wrong for most of his life. What'll be interesting to see is what happens the next time. What happens when this comes up again, you know, because the threat is not gone. So Callum and Rayla reconcile over the idea of the moon portal. Of course, Lu Jane explicitly forbade me from messing with the portal. So we'll just lie to her. There you go. Give her a taste of her own medicine. I hope you find out about your parents and Runan. Me too. That's nice. Little, uh, little forehead kiss. So they trick poor crying Alan into helping them rebuild the portal. So there's like sort of a comic book montage of them rebuilding the moon portal. Callum in his photographic memory remembers the ritual. What did you do? <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm loving it. How's it feel? Okay, Viren, my parents, Runa. Anyone? There's like some kind of shadow elf following Rayla. Maybe shadow Rayla? Oh, no, no, no. There's a bunch of them. What we'll do is we'll wait. Wait and hope that Rayla finds her way back before sunrise. Before the portal closes. And she's lost forever. She'll be alright. So I think Lujane implied that the relationship she had with these people is what's going to come out and she'll have to overcome it. So that's a good exercise for Rayla, I guess. But also a big danger for her. Our mission was a failure. So these are the elves who died in the attack. I didn't kill anyone. The Dragon Prince was alive. We didn't. None of this needed to happen. No one had to die. If he hadn't... If he... Varen, where are you? There he is. She found his... Wait, what? Why is Varen in the cocoon? Ugh. That's a nice shot. I like that. Lu Jane, didn't you say that a moon phoenix is magically tethered to both life and death? What? Yes, that's right. Fifi, we need a feather. That will keep you tethered to the living world. Whatever you do, do not let go of it. So Callum drops the feather, and they do battle with spirits in order to get it, and they escape. That's twice he saved her recently. Once by flying, once by swimming. I don't know. I didn't find my parents. I didn't see Runan. I still have no answers, but they're gone, Callum. I'm never going to be okay with that, but I guess I have to face it. You know I'm always here for you, right? That's much better. He may be caught between life and death somehow, but Viren is on this side of things. He's alive, Callum. I could have lost you. We do this together. Don't try changing my mind. <laughs> so dramatic. I love you, Callum. I love you too. <laughs> Ooh, white lies are illusions you build with your words to protect the hearts of those you love. I'm sorry, you can't come with me. Everyone's lying. That's it? What? That's so short! Alright, so I guess the main plot point that comes out of this is that when Season 4 starts, it looks like Rayla will be on her own journey and Callum will be looking for her. That's my guess. See, this is what happens when you go to Lu Jane for advice. Nothing good can come of it, ever. I feel sorry for Alan, honestly. He's in for a world of hurt. Basically, none of my questions got answered. <laughs> Least of all, my question about Noodle Udlia. What is happening there? <laughs> <gasps> this comic was very heavy on the Raylum, which is fine. Rayla's argument for running away is basically that she's lost everyone and doesn't want to lose Callum too, that she couldn't live with herself. But I'm on Callum's side on this one. You know, I think you got to give people the courtesy of the truth and let them make their own decisions. Callum would, you know, have no problem following her. Probably would have no problem dying for her, honestly, you know? So I think he deserves to make that choice. That being said, it could be interesting in season four to see a Rayla journey. You know, we've gotten a lot of Callum Rayla journeying together. We sort of know their dynamic. I think there are some cool things you could do with Rayla alone, you know? And there are some cool things you could do with Callum Soren. Um, I'm assuming Ezrin is going to go back to the kingdom. He's sort of needed there. Overall, I don't think this really adds a lot to the story. I think it's sort of just an in-between. It'll explain a couple small things when season four starts. There are some interesting questions raised that I think would be cool to explore going forward. Like what Soren said about Viren, I think is interesting. It'll be crazy to see how he deals with battling Viren going forward and how he tries to cope with this new world he's created for himself of like thinking and moral values and... You know, things like that. I'm always interested in seeing Ezrin doing kingly stuff. That's really cool. Lu Jane, she can, she can go. I'm kind of done with her. I think some of the dramatic impact of Rayla's struggle is sort of softened by the fact that we strongly suspect that her parents exist as currency. So we know eventually that she's going to figure that out and maybe even be able to restore her parents. We also already know that Viren's a threat. Right? Like, that's pretty clear that he's going to come back. And they don't even really understand the extent of the threat, right? Like, they haven't really wrapped their minds around Erebos yet, I don't think. The most emotionally compelling thing about this whole thing is just the idea that now I've finished the content and I gotta wait for season four. 
It's kind of sad. This means the, you know, the actual hiatus for Dragon Prince. Although we still got the Q&A. That'll be the, the true final. Let me know if you guys have read the comic and what you think of it. I'd be interested to hear other perspectives on it, maybe things I missed, or other predictions for the future based on the comic. There are probably some details that, I, that I'm not thinking about here. But anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Q&A.